something different today. Although I'm just standing underneath the centre tree. And there's my favourite trees in the forest, Napoleonic oaks. I'm moving that way and going down to check an area of beach. It's a small beach plantation, about 100 yards square. I'm going to look there for Platybunus pine tour, somewhere I've never looked before. And I'm hoping to find it there and increase its known range within the county. And while I'm down that way, that part of Sherwood, I'm going to call in and have a look at Thinghow. Thinghow is the old Viking meeting place. Nottingham's true history, not some green tarted bloke that romped around in this place. Don't those beach look something? I've never walked around and looked on these trunks. Come down here just to look, see if Pintorum is here, or Platybunus Pintorum, should I say. It's found further round this track, about a quarter, half a mile away, just near Thinghow, but it's not found up at Clipston or Quarter. And I'm about halfway between the two sites. I'm trying to determine the limit of its range here. But those trees, they're just beautiful. Why would somebody not love beach? And at the side of this beach plantation that I'm going to have a little wander around in in a minute, is this grassy ride here. As far as I'm aware, no one's ever checked this for glowworms, but I wouldn't be surprised if the odd glowworm can be found along here. It's somewhere I'll probably have to check myself later this year, as is along here, because this is another grassy ride. And after a few hundred yards, this joins up towards the Shield Forest Country Park to a point where two glowworms were found for the first time in 2021. This is a little used footpath and I wouldn't be surprised to find glowworms along here. It certainly needs checking again. I have checked the main ride that I'm walking on, I've checked that once, but it's really not satisfactory just to survey an area or a track once in a year. That's the day that there could be no glowworms on it. You could go back the next night or walk it and survey it the next night and there could be two or three. So really I need to come back and do this circuit from Clipson Old Quarter and down around by Thinghow, which I'll show you in a minute if you're wondering what on earth Thinghow is. You won't be impressed, but it has got a fantastic history. But it's an area that I really need to give at least another quick check to, as I did in 2021. Well, success. I've looked at about a dozen trees and this one is here, six feet off the ground. So this is a new site, new, maybe a new one kilometre grid square for this harvestman in Nottinghamshire. Now I need to do a thorough survey of this plantation. Excellent stuff. I do love finding these.
beautiful, isn't it? Look at the leaves. Such a pure light green. I find beach plantations or woodland. Not even she doesn't have any beach woodland. Not really, it's just all old plantations such as this one. This is just one sort of square, about 100 metre square really. Tucked away amongst pines, acres and acres of pines and forestry plantation. A lot of it's gone, but there's still some left. And then you've got these magnificent trees. I love tall trees with lots of trunk. Like pines, like pine plantations. But I love these. Something incredibly stately about these. Almost cathedral-like when you stood like I am in amongst them. And then when you've got them to yourself, the wonderful places. Peach woodland like this in spring is an absolute joy. It's a joy to work. It's probably one of the best times to to work it from an entomological point of view. There's nearly always something crawling up the trunks, as in this case, Platybunus pintorum. But here also. It's probably a new record, actually. There's the uh, Sarkidae moth Taliporia tubulosa, which produces about inch-long cigar-shaped larval cases. Quite a lot of those on these trees. You never know what you're going to find. Ground flora-wise, nothing. But there's things that lurk in the leaf litter on the beaches. And I must come down some time and sieve through some to see what there is. But in the absence of me having a sieve and a tray to sieve it onto, I have to keep looking on the trunks of these beaches and enjoying the peace and quiet until I go crunching through the leaf litter. Tucked away in the depths of the former pine plantations of Sherwood Forest is this innocuous looking mound. It looks nothing and to all intents and purposes looks just part of the local landscape. Especially as where it is situated there is some undulations to the ground. But actually, this site is a site of fantastic historical importance. You can forget your Robin Hood and men prancing around the forest in tights because that's just fictitious. This is real. This is part of our Viking heritage. It's hard to imagine that this innocuous looking lump of earth was anything other than that but it's altogether a different story aside from being purple emperor country this is the home of that most regal and majestic of British butterflies in Sherwood Many years ago, in the Viking era, this was the place of the utmost significance and importance. This is Thinghow. Thinghow is a Viking name that means meeting place or thing, as it were called. This was where all the elders from the surrounding villages and areas all would come and meet. The purpose of that meeting was to discuss the business and orders of the day. It's said that in the surrounding area 
there could be thousands and thousands of people all listening to that business being discussed. Nowadays, we've just got a chief chaff. And it's hard to imagine. Presumably it was more open then. A lot of this would have been cleared because a lot of Sherwood Forest is all ridge and furrow and all around this area, this local area, LIDAR surveys detected that there were many compartments and settlements here many, many years ago. You wouldn't think it now, looking at the lay of the land. You can imagine standing here though and your voice carrying brilliantly all the way around. Who knows what history has been before you? Now, Thinghow was lost to history until about 2005 when it was discovered by Linda Mallet and Stuart Reddish. Their work really put Thinghow and this part of Sherwood Forest on the map archaeologically. This site is of national importance and significance. When you compare the Viking history in this area to the Robin Hood story, and that's all Robin Hood is. It's just a story, an elaborated story. No doubt there was an outlaw, but the rest has been exaggerated over history. It's just a shame that the real history of Sherwood Forest has been forgotten and is still barely preached about even now. Thing how and the Viking history here that's in the forest is really what the school children of today should be learning about in Nottinghamshire. The vast majority of people in the county know nothing of this site and we should make more of it. my first cuckoo of this year. There's always been one or two birds regular in the Sherwood Forest area but it's probably down to one single individual male now and I think this one is a little bit late. Apparently it was heard on the 15th but it's now the 1st of May. It'll probably move over into Clipson Old Quarter from where it was caught in there was probably just on the way down to that beach plantation that I first looked at where I found Flattibunas Pintorum and it was good to find that in a new area. That's a new site for Nottinghamshire. But it was also nice to revisit Thinghow and just give a bit of information on that. It's no good me telling you exactly where it is because some people might be upset by it but do a bit of research on the internet and you'll find out that easy. I can't be accused of anything then. But I wouldn't recommend anybody purposely goes and looks at it because I don't think you'll be impressed. A lot of people will just go, oh, is that it? And that'll be it. But it's important. It's a nationally important site. And we've got it here in Nottinghamshire, in the Mansfield area. No one barely mentions it, which is a shame. An evocative sound, that isn't it, cuckoo? For many, the true sound and bird call of spring. <laughs> 